pregame.com. Syracuse, UConn, we're back here, pregame.tv, talking college basketball. I am Steve Fezzik here with Brian Leonard, the only two-time Cantor Showdown finalist. And I know you're going to be talking NBA when we return, but we get a chance to talk some, some college basketball here. And who's going to win the tournament, Brian? I don't care. You don't care. I'm just looking to bet individual games. I don't play futures. Uh, just it's not worth it. Boring. Well, what, what can I say? I, I'm not a big long shot type of guy. No, good. That excellent advice. You hear so often people talk about like betting roulette chips on various teams and 20 to one, 25 to one, and the like. I saw something where Creighton is now like 220 to one in terms of true odds that someone put out there, and good luck finding Creighton at more than 50 to one. So it shows how difficult it is to go ahead and get the value. I, I too, am obviously just going ahead and betting straight. But I do like to look at a team whose fortunes are going up or down. And one thing with, with, with Syracuse here, uh, they had one of their key players. He was out for six games. Academic suspension, which is amazing to me because I mean, I know Syracuse is a fine school and all, but it's a big enough school. They can just hide the players in, in classes with other players. So basically what that's telling me, if you go on academic suspension, that means that the other Syracuse athletes are getting A's and B's in classes that you're getting F's in. And it's just it's pretty impressive that someone you know, could be that poor. So James Sutherland is back, though. He's ready to play, rested, and it's made an immediate um, impact on Syracuse. And a lot of people are talking, here's a team that was rolling along. If he hadn't been out, they, they dropped a couple games while he was gone. Perhaps this team would be in that mix of these top eight teams that everyone's fighting for number one. And I think because of that, they're flying a little bit under the radar here. When you, when you talk about uh, the grades and all that, it's, it's interesting. I always like to hear when they talk about what their major is. If they're in <laughs> anything to do with athletics or since Cade's behind the screen over there in broadcasting, that's, that's what tells you a little bit about their educational background right there. But uh, you got to get it back from everybody's well, picking on me for the last game with Evansville. But uh, yeah, if, if, if the guy, you know, a guy's going to medical school, I mean, he could be getting D's in medical school. The guy's a whole lot smarter than I am. Well, well, Cade went to, to UNLV, so he's... Uh, um, there, there you go. I, 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 I don't know how we... We're going to you know, when we come back next week, we're going to have to talk about Evansville, at least in, in one game, if you're over your, your hangover, there you know, go. with it. But I got good news as far as I got player updates here, and it's true, he's, he's, he's a very minor player, but apparently when we look at UConn, their center, who isn't, who isn't an, an important player, Wolf, but he just got arrested on Monday. Shocker, domestic dispute <laughs> arrest. And what I love about this is the time that people get arrested. They, they never get arrested like at noon, you know, over an argument about what they're having for lunch. 6 a.m., police come. Um, he doesn't, apparently he doesn't want to leave, you know. And I, I look at that and it's just like, that's all you need is a program to have a distraction like that. You can just see the coach meeting with the assistant coach, the coach screaming at the assistant coach. This was your responsibility to keep this guy in check, you know. He was supposed to have your direct number to call you so you could go over there at 4 in the morning because you know they got guys that do that. That's what I would do if I was yeah. the head coach, right? Yep. What, what, what do you do as well? Yeah, definitely you do that. And uh, it's, it's interesting. I've got a friend back in Cleveland going to be moving out here and he's looking for apartments. And he says, uh, I got some pretty good deals on Boulder Highway. And I said, well, I've been down Boulder Highway during the day. But a couple times I decided I'd take a shortcut back to Henderson and I'd go at night. I've never seen so many cop cars in my life. That tells you what kind of neighborhood you're in. At night, how many cop cars you see as you're driving by? Well, you know, RJ actually brought me in initially not to handicap, but he thought I could just keep some of the guys in line, like like Vegas Runner and and Marco, and so I could, you know, I could be the designated, you know, driver, keep people out of trouble with for for whatever reason, you know. As I mean, I know those guys have a lot more fun than I do, and um, <laughs> I'm kind of jealous actually of Vegas Runner's lifestyle. I hope he's not listening. I think we, but, I think we all are, and I think he's proud of that. And he's and he's able to get this great information to win. So I'll yeah. all the power to him um, but we're digressing you know getting back to the game I really think we're in a situation where, where I look at these two programs I look at Connecticut that had success under Calhoun was a contender now they still have the name but I don't think they have the team anymore and I look at Syracuse and I think they're still a team on the come 
that I like to say on the come that they, they, you know they can contend and actually be a national title champion. So I'm I'm probably going to go ahead and make it official if there's no objections well, here. here. Here's my thoughts on this one. Neither team is rebounding the ball very well right now. In fact, you take a look at Connecticut. Two of the last three games, they shot less than 31 percent from the floor. Now they're going up against that Syracuse defense where they don't let you have many easy baskets. I may be looking at the under here because neither team really rebounds well. Not a lot of offensive rebounds. Uh, Connecticut, I think, is going to have a real hard time against this defense shooting from the outside. I'm going to look for a low-scoring game, so we might both be involved. In yeah, this. that zone defense is very good for Syracuse. Let me go ahead and make it official here as a free play. Free play here at pregame.tv. We are going to be on the cues. Lay the four with Syracuse, playing much better with Sutherland. I expect they'll be able to pull away. Brian likes the under in that. If you do play the under, uh, because I'm projecting Syracuse to win this game by eight to ten points, you might get hit with the foul fest. And because of that, you may want to go ahead and, and play the first half under instead of the game under. It always seems a little safer. Um, I know we had an epic fail with the Notre Dame Louisville under. Guys were on that. I think what, did it take two or three overtimes to get that thing over? I didn't have anything on that game, so I don't know. Yeah, it was. It took I, a while, though. It's. Um, I know that that ruined everyone's Saturday night in terms of their handicapping because they spent so much time, um, you know, watching it instead of you know breaking down the card, you know, for the for the following day. But sometimes, sometimes you got to do that. I know I like to say don't have any fun, but sometimes it's okay. To I, I wanted fun. to go six and seven overtimes. I wanted to see records. I mm -hmm. say I was there when that happened, and, but it was a great game regardless. Well, speaking of fun, um, be sure to stay tuned here at pregame.tv because when we come back, we're going to break out a team that I think has maybe a little bit too much fun in what they're doing. That's our local UNLV Rebels. Cade's certainly a fan. I'm a fan of Dave Rice. I root for the team to win, but it seems rare and rare that I actually am backing them with my own dollars. So when we come back at pregame.tv, we'll be breaking that down and then we'll be moving over to the NBA action.